Hello, I'm Bas Hammer from Possum Labs, and today I'll be talking about validators. This is for the Possum Labs or DSL uh, libraries, and I'm assuming you're building your framework on top of the Possum Labs or DSL.core library. So let's hop on over to Visual Studio and see what we have going on here. Okay, so. We have a test object, we'll take a look at this in a moment, but uh, effectively it just has a bunch of different properties. And here we have a bunch of different validators. So for instance, we can do a string validator to verify it is initialized to null. Uh, ints, longs, floats, and decimals are all set to zero by default, and a boolean is set to false. Um, and we have lots of other options in here. So for instance, over here we say have an integer, we set it initialize it to 42, and we can apply validators to this that it's greater than 41, less than 43, greater than or equal to 42, less than or equal to 42. Right, so there's the different types of syntax you can supply to the validators. You can also supply a regular expression syntax, right? So we have a string, we initialize it to Bob42, and we can supply this regular expression to validate that it matches. You also have literals, so this allows you to bypass the substitution that normally would happen. So for instance, we have a variable called TO, and we also have a property on this called TO. Because we don't want to dereference the variable, we can either supply it in the following with single ticks or double ticks uh, or double quotes um, to validate that in, it's indeed what we expect it to be. And then we have string substitution. It's also supported in these validators. And if you need to, you can also supply things in percent or in dollar syntax. Uh, money syntax. So the reason these exist is just to make tests more readable. Uh, in code, quite often our percentages are expressed as decimal values, whereas the business likes to talk about them as percentages. So we can supply the values as percentages or the value as money. And it also supports the different negative money uh, notations that are out there. So there you go. These are all the validators that are available out of the box. And again, this is just one step we looked at. Then blah has the value blah. And we'll take a look now at what's actually happening behind the scenes to make this possible. All right. So first of all, we have some transformations that happen. Um, the transformation that's most important is this guy over here which allows anything to be transformed into an object, right? So this is what's taking care of the left-hand part of the uh, step. And so this allows the step itself to take as an argument an object, and then it will let the uh, uh, resolver dereference this to whatever value gets out without any issues. And then the other parts are important is we have uh, transformers for tables in case you want to check an entire table of values, but you also have the validation transformation, which takes in a string and spits out a validation. And then the steps are relatively simple. We have the uh, logic in the validation step base, and we'll take a look at that in a second but you can say something has the values. This validates an entire list of things. Um, something has a specific value. That's the one we looked at. Uh, this contains the values. And, and this one says contains the value, just singleton. So these are different types of ways you can specify things. And let's take a look at the validation step base in here. Uh, most of the logic is just inherited from the core project, which supports the validators themselves. But yeah, we just use the executor. So that means that if your validation throws an exception and you did specify your expecting exceptions, then it will uh, eat the first and record it. So you can do negative testing that way if you really need to. Uh, we'll cover that in a later tutorial. And, but most of the time we just uh, 
do the validate on the object and there's an extension method that comes in with the framework um, so that's about it if you take a quick peek at the validation the validation has a predicate it expects an object um, and it returns a string yep and then it has some text which is involved it has an invocation where you pass in the object and uh, it can also return exceptions when you're validating things most of the time you don't have to worry about this chances are you can just copy this and i've never had to customize this in any of the applications that i've worked on so it will be pretty sturdy without having to modify things too much otherwise you can always look at the source code and see exactly what's going on in there if you need to support additional type of validations uh, that are not available out of the box take a quick look at the test object the test object is very boring it just checks all the different types of data types right so we have strings integers long floats decimals boolean um, create a special i don't believe these are being used or template name or the existing is your name isn't being used for this particular test either and when we create one of these items we effectively do nothing uh, the only thing we check is created is set to true we never make them special so that's it it's pretty simple but it's very powerful because it allows you to run validations on a lot of different parts at the same time without necessarily having to specify anything there's also a set of web validators which are part uh, supported through the web project and we'll cover those later on as well thank you very much for your time and please provide feedback in the comments below as to how these tutorials can be more useful